This is Active Recall. On this episode, I'm going to talk about the magic window. What is the magic window? So I pretty much took it from this Rotten Tomatoes interview with uh, Stephen Yoon. He is the actor who plays Glenn on The Walking Dead. He talks about how his favorite movie is The Sandlot. And what the magic window is, as he describes it, is like this time when you're 10 to 12 years old, so around fourth to seventh grade it's this time where you i guess (laughs) start having like your favorite things um maybe not start but um for a lot of adults your favorite movies from childhood are like things from this period of time his is the sandlot which he recognizes like if you watch it as as an adult for the first time maybe it's not the best movie but he talks about how he loves it they were great child actors and things like that that said, like, the, the Sandlot is a pretty good movie. Uh, I watched it on a plane recently. It uh, still holds up really well. Uh, so me and a friend, Wally, we do the Active Recall podcast. We talked about this on our episode, and we took it uh, beyond uh, just movies, and we talked about um, food. We talked about – we did talk about movies, uh, video games, and books, so just running through it for movies – I also had a favorite movie as a kid that was base, a baseball movie, and it was Rookie of the Year. That one doesn't hold up as well. But I, I talk about, like, I've watched it probably 100 times. I'm trying not to exaggerate either, but there was definitely, like, a year where I would always put it on after school while doing homework, and it would just be playing in the background. So I always uh, would have that. And Wally says Dumb and Dumber, which is a pretty good movie. Uh, like a comedy classic, I think. In this case, our movies weren't so dumb as like, or actually like mine wasn't great, but Dumb and Dumber is actually like a movie that holds up. And um, I think it's plenty of people's favorite movies. Then there's Food, uh, while he talked about Chopin. And th- this was just like a thinking about like lunch. Then we talked about video games. Um, again, like no- nothing too crazy here. Then there's books. So I remember The Giver being this very, um, I felt like an adult after I read it in like fourth grade or fifth grade. I watched, I saw my brother reading it. It was one of like the first, uh, he, he tried to tell me about it and how good it was, but he couldn't really describe it. And even I can't have a hard time describing it. Like it was the first time I saw kind of like the power of writing. And um, yeah, it just goes to show like how much, this time um again like 10 to 12 years old how much of an impression these things make on you recently i've been reading um so the book is not called memory hero but it is a book by uh shay serrano and it's basketball and other things where he talks about this concept of uh the memory hero which sounds pretty similar to it it is like it's related it's all just about like the same concept but he does talk about how we remember things as kids and because you're a kid and you don't know anything uh things just get exaggerated he talks about like oh yeah maybe biodome isn't the best movie and maybe like uh rex and fx isn't the best rap group that will stand the test of time but in that moment because you're a kid you just think these things are the best things i remember i (laughs) what Me and a friend, we took uh, his little brother to watch Ninja Turtles. Uh, This was one of the CGI ones from, not not one of the recent ones. I think it was like probably from like 10 years ago. We walked out. uh, We asked what he thought. He said, this is the best movie ever. So you you could see it when you just talk to uh, younger, if you talk to kids now, they'll have, um, you just love things more as a kid and just kind of gets stuck there. Like, Uh, I was just watching uh, old episodes of Doug because there was a sale on iTunes and I don't know how well it holds up. Um, The animation is terrible. Well, not terrible, but it it just looks so dated compared to maybe like episodes of Simpsons from the time. It it looks more like it was drawn in like the 80s or something. Not how I remember it. I think I'm remembering like the more polished uh, Disney version. Anyway, uh, back to basketball and other things. There's a good chapter in there where um, Shay had other writers talk about their memory heroes and them growing up. Um, like Bill Simmons says he loved uh, Nick Witherspoon just because he remembers a game where Nick Witherspoon 
killed his Celtics. And looking back, there isn't. He talks about like how there isn't a game where he had fifty points or anything, but it's just stuck in his memory. Then Chuck Pearson, um, Nick Van Exel, uh, Jason Concepcion talks about Patrick Ewing and how he was so sure that he was the best center in the league. Yeah, when when you're a kid and you have your teams, um, first there's also there's like two filters there where it's. Um, just being a homer and then also being a kid, it will uh, magnify it even more. In my case, I was trying to think of like a, a, a player and it was uh, Jeff Hornacek. Um, and it was mostly because I thought he was so good because I would play like NBA Live with my older brother. Of course, like all I would try to do is shoot threes. There, you know, you're not, I didn't, <laughs> like in third grade, my brother's destroying me all the time. Um, and. I liked the. I think I didn't like Michael Jordan, so I liked the Jazz. I liked the Suns, and then I liked the Jazz, and all of them lost uh, to the Bulls. Anyway, so I liked the Jazz. I would always try to just shoot threes with um, John Stockton and also Jeff Horn- Hornacek, uh, just looking at his stats and seeing like, oh, who are the good three point shooters? That was the only strategy I knew. Um, and another book I read this past year was "But What If We're Wrong." by Chuck Klosterman and this takes kind of like that idea of our faulty memories and uh, how we magnify things in the present when we're kids but gives it like it's a different perspective on it where as adults right now and as a society and like civilization we think a lot of things are true right now and if that's happened before in history with science and like physics physics and things like that where um, the best experts in the world thought things that were definitely not true uh you know like centuries and centuries ago like thinking earth is is the center of the universe um how gravity works how time works and things like that and in that case uh this is a great book to check out just to um look at different things now and and it's not just like physics and things in the book It, it does talk about just like what people's legacies will be um in 100 years and things like that So you can see it when you look at the magic window of things you liked as a kid that don't hold up that well. But um, if we fast forward like 500 years ago and look back, what will still stand the test of time? If we if we look at basketball, um, it's just the main things that will stick out. So it does seem like Michael Jordan will be this person that people remember, say, like 100, maybe 500 years ago. Who knows if basketball will exist in its form? But a hundred years from now, yeah, he's going to be the player. Um, and then probably LeBron James. And one of my things, like I love Kobe Bryant, but it seems hard to think that he'll be a person um, that sticks out like 150 years from now, 200 years from now, uh, because you can't think about him without thinking of how he compares to Jordan. So just between the, the two, I'm not talking about like who the better player is or anything like that, but he was always compared to Jordan. So um yeah in the far future what will his legacy be and yeah uh this is that idea the magic window i think there's a lot more here that you could uh talk about so uh i might return to it it's just definitely like a fun thing to think about and uh talk to your friends about so um yeah thanks for checking this out uh hit subscribe if you liked it and yeah uh Would love to hear what your favorite magic window things are, uh, just things you loved as a kid.